there, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be doing a book review for Shift by Hugh Howey, which is the Silo book two. So if you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, you know that this is not my normal filming space. I actually film upstairs in uh, my library and unfortunately the AC up there is broken and it's not going to be fixed for a couple of days. So for me to film up there would have just been really, really miserable and hot. So just excuse the change in filming space and if there's any like change in acoustics because this room is way more echoey, there's no carpet. But before we go ahead and get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new bookish content. I post new videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box below for links to all of my social medias, my buddy read Discord, and my Patreon where you can be entered into winning book giveaways from me. Shift by Hugh Howey is the second installment of the Silo Trilogy, which is an adult sci-fi post-apocalyptic series. I did read and review Wool, and I do have a full review for that, so I'll link that up in the cards for you guys. Check it out. I'm also going to be discussing spoilers in this review, but I'll make sure to put timestamps down below so that you can skip over those spoilers if you have not yet read the book. So the series is kind of funny because Shift can actually be considered a prequel novel to Wool because it actually goes through the entire timeline from the conception of the silos all the way up to what happened in book one. So it was just kind of funny that it was made the second book in the series, but I actually liked that because part of what I liked about the first book was all of the suspense about not knowing why these sil silos were built. How did the world become toxic? Is it really dangerous outside? Just all of these questions that Hugh Howey purposely did not answer in the first book is one of the things that intrigued me and wanted me to read the second book. And he does actually answer all of those questions for the most part in the second book. So in this book, we're actually following multiple timelines, which doesn't make any sense until you until you read. And we're following a couple of different key characters. The first one is Donald, and we're first introduced to Donald in the year 2049, and he has just become a congressman. And he kind of looks up to this senator named Senator Thurman. His family was lifelong friends with Senator Thurman. He dated his daughter, Anna, in college. And a Senator Thurman kind of helped Donald get this congressional appointment. And he's actually approached by Thurman to help with this classified project. And the way they approach him is that they are going to be creating this nuclear like waste facility. And they're going to be creating these silos that the workers can hide in underground in case anything goes awry with this nuclear testing facility. So that's what Donald thinks going into this, that this is what this is about. He has a degree in architecture, so he just takes the bull by the horns and just puts all his effort into designing these silos to support a population for years and years and years. So here's where I'm going to be getting into some spoilery stuff. So what we learned in this book is there was actually 50 silos that were built to represent the 50 states of the United States. And silo one is kind of like the headquarters silo. They're the ones that essentially control or monitor the rest of the silos to make sure that they're doing and acting how they're supposed to. And by this time in history, we have actually figured out a way to cryogenically freeze people. And the people in Silo 1 are cryogenically frozen, and every um, couple decades, they are woken up to serve a shift of monitoring the other silos. So that is why the book is called Shift. So a lot of this book, I don't want to say a lot, but a decent amount of this book is dedicated to Donald's different shifts of him being awoken from his cryogenic freeze to him going back under his cryogenic freeze, and then what exactly happens during his shift. So in book one, in Wool, we hear a lot about these rebellions that took place in Silo 18, and that actually happened on one of Donald's shifts, and he, he talks about that. So it's interesting that they are purposely keeping these people that know the truth, these people that have the memories, the people that experience the world as it was before, alive, so that they can advise and monitor the rest of humanity that was not alive at that time. So there is actually some remnant of the past that is still around in these people who are on and off being cryogenically frozen. 
So I found it a really interesting concept and not really what I was expecting. Circling back to the beginning of the book, we also learn about some new technology that prompted Senator Thurman and all of these people to build these silos. What we learned is that nanotechnology has advanced to the point where the enemy is creating nanobots to attack humans and kill humans. And not only humans, but any living thing. So they can essentially destroy the world. And all of these leaders at the time thought that the only way to save humanity was to eradicate it completely and then put this certain amount of people in each silo so that once the world had cleansed itself of this, these nanobots, they would be able to start anew. But Donald eventually remembers and realizes that it was these people who destroyed the world in order to save the world from nanobots. And it was Senator Thurman who initiated the nuclear attack on Atlanta and other parts of the United States. And I'm guessing the world, I'm not really sure, but definitely the United States to kill everybody. And what he called it was the Great Reset. So he's trying to reset human civilization, human history, so that they're able to start over. Now for me, where it gets a little bit messy is that they have 50 silos. And they monitor each silo to make sure that the inhabitants don't want to go outside, that they are acting the way that they're supposed to, that if they have any rebellion, that that is immediately put to a stop. And if the silo gets too out of control, they kill everyone in the silo. So Donald talks about that in a couple of his shifts, that he actually was the one that said, we need to kill the silo off. So I think by the time I got to the end of the book, I don't really remember how many, but several silos had been completely uh, killed off. And in this book, we see a couple different silos that go through that rebellion stage. And then Donald has to make the call, the executive call, to not help them, to kill them. And that's what he does. So this book basically follows Donald's journey. And what's interesting is that when we first meet him, he's definitely naive. He's maybe in his 30s. Um, he thinks that he's trying to help by working with Senator Thurman. He doesn't really believe that someone that he admired and has known for his whole life would be capable of such atrocities. And that by the end of the book, he realizes that these people have no problem killing all these people in these silos until only one silo remains. And those are the people that would be the best to restart human civilization because they've shown the most restraint, the most compliance. And that's kind of the whole premise behind uh, why the silos were built and Senator Thurman's motivation for doing what he did. And I actually had a little bit of a problem with some of those reasons. It just didn't make sense to me why these people who are monitoring the silos would decide to kill off an entire silo based on how they were acting. I mean, we're human beings. We're selfish and, and violent and can be cruel by nature. So by thinking that those types of things are never going to pop up over the course of, you know, a couple of generations is just not logical. It just didn't make sense to me that they're trying to reset the earth. They're trying to repopulate the earth, yet they're killing people again, the people that have been in these silos. So there was a little bit of disconnect for me personally with that part of the story. I just didn't find it made a lot of sense. I get why Thurman did what he did with regards to like the nanotechnology. He thought he was saving humanity in the long run. But I also feel as if that technology was so readily available, we could have created nanobots to attack the enemy instead of killing off your own people. So it was one of those situations where the antagonist is thinking what they're doing is right when in actuality it's completely wrong. There was definitely a lot that went into the story behind the character's motivations. One of the things that I really did like was following Donald's story because like the reader, like me, he really didn't know the truth behind everything. And we are slowly learning the clues and coming to the same realizations as Donald is as the story goes on. There were a couple of subplots in here. So if you remember from book one, you know that we had a character named Jimmy. And we actually get the whole backstory of the rebellion that happened in that, that silo and Jimmy's story. And then we also get the point of view of a character named Mission who experienced another rebellion in a silo. So those subplots I felt like were a little bit too long and too tedious to put in the book and I found myself kind of skimming a lot of it. You know, we're experiencing a lot of Jimmy's day-to-day -day 
activities of thinking he's by himself and trying to survive in the silo. And I just didn't find it that interesting. I found Donald's story, you know, the backstory way more interesting. Same thing with Mission, didn't really grip me that much. So just know that there are a couple of subplots. Having said that, the story does go full circle because at the end, um, Donald does make contact with Juliet, who's now the mayor of her silo. She knows that there are multiple silos. She knows that there have been violence in some of them. She knows that there's other people that can monitor and listen to them. So I love that the story came full circle and it really, really set up for an exciting book three. All in all, I think that Shift was a really interesting second book considering that it's technically a prequel. I love that it came full circle. I loved learning as Donald did the truth behind you know, what actually happened and why the silos were built and what happened to the world and the motivations behind people he thought he knew. I loved all of that. I will say this book is a chunker. It is tedious. There were a lot of little things that I don't think needed to be in the book, could have been taken out and just made it a quicker, faster read. But I definitely recommend it if you enjoyed book one. And I ended up giving Shift four out of five stars. All right, you guys, let me know in the comments if you read this book and what you thought of it. And I will see y'all in another video soon. Goodbye.